Today in 3D printing, bionic corals, maker spotlight, and oorah. Mother Nature has continued to amaze us with ecosystems full of ingenuity and organic genius since the beginning of time. Coral reefs, known as the most efficient ecosystems here on Earth, are capable of harnessing light in a unique way. Photons from the sun can reach all of the coral, even down in the dark depths or underneath the shade of other life. Researchers from San Diego University and Cambridge in the UK wanted to mimic the way coral structures transfer light to the rest of their system. And 3D printing was how they were going to get to do it. Daniel Wangprausort, a Marie Curie fellow from the Cambridge Department of Chemistry, led the study, and the results are fascinating. They found coral, used as an incubator for microalgae growth, yielded growth rates 100 times higher than that of standard liquid growth mediums. To create the intricate structures of natural corals, the researchers used a rapid 3D bioprinting technique capable of reproducing detailed structures that mimic the complex designs and functions of living tissues. This method can print structures with micrometer scale resolution in just minutes. This is critical because the life of the living algae is very short. The coral-inspired structures were highly efficient at redistributing light, just like natural corals. Only biocompatible materials were used to fabricate the 3D printed bionic corals. The team created their own 3D bioprinter that uses light to print coral microscale structures in seconds. The printed coral mimics natural coral structures' ability to harvest light, creating an artificial host microenvironment for the living microalgae. We developed an artificial coral tissue and skeleton with a combination of polymer gels and hydrogels doped with cellulose nanomaterials to mimic the optical properties of living corals, said co-senior author Dr. Silvia Vignolini, also from the Cambridge Department of Chemistry. Cellulose is an abundant biopolymer. It is excellent at scattering light, and we used it to optimize delivery of light into photosynthetic algae. By copying the host microhabitat, we can also use our 3D bioprinted corals as a model system for the coral algal symbiosis, which is urgently needed to understand the breakdown of the symbiosis during coral reef decline, said Wang Prausert. The use of this structure in environments where light is limited or resources are scarce can create a living environment. For things like space travel, this is a big step forward. This study was funded by the European Union's Horizon 2020 Research and Innovation Program, the European Research Council, the David Phillips Fellowship, the National Institutes of Health, the National Science Foundation, the Carlsberg Foundation, and the Willem Foundation. Last week, we highlighted a few of the incredible efforts of people and organizations in the 3D printing community all over the globe to help in the fight against the invisible enemy, COVID-19. One group, we failed to mention as brought to our attention by one of our viewers last week, Dylan Raymond, is the United States Marine Corps. Thanks for that email, Dylan. Inside their workspace on Marine Corps Air Station Futenma on the Japanese island of Okinawa, Marines at Camp Kinzer have created thousands of the 3D printable frames for face masks and face shields for direct use at the Naval Hospital in Okinawa. Staff Sergeant Quincy Reynolds is a member of the global 3D printing community, and he had this to say. We were actually able to be a little bit proactive on this whole deal because we could see the trend stateside and saw there was going to be a shortage. A whole bunch of us got together and we said, hey, what can we do? How can we attack this? With 17 3D printers and two to four stacks of 10 frames per machine, the Marines attacked it head on, printing over 800 frames per day with each loaded build plate taking about 11 hours to finish. These printers are typically used to 3D print parts for aviation maintenance, which is another entirely awesome story we can hopefully showcase in the near future. The frames, along with the necessary materials, are then sent over to the Naval Hospital, where they are assembled, cleaned, and distributed. The intention is to reduce the need for medical-grade masks and respirators by giving Marines and sailors the alternative PPE, especially those engaged in frontline medical care and screening. Chief Warrant Officer 4, Sean Flores, summed up our final thoughts perfectly. It never ceases to amaze me how a crisis brings Marines and innovators and individuals together. Against any adversary, we can come together and get after the root of the problem and try to fix problems upstream. 
As you can see, makers come from anywhere and are any shape, any color, any size, and they also come from any branch of the US military. Lately, we've seen makers from all over coming together to help fill the need for PPE. Justin Levy, 16-year-old El Camino Real sophomore, is one of those makers. He is using his Prusa 3D printer to produce around 20 face shields per day and works with masks for docs to get them to where they are needed. I got the chance to catch up with Justin and chat with him about his efforts. Have a look. With us right now is Justin Levy, an awesome person contributing to 3D printing for the personal protective equipment crisis at the moment. Hey, Justin. Hey, Joel. How you doing? Doing great. Uh, I just want to say thank you for taking a moment out of your day to give us a chat. I have no doubt in my mind that you're 3D printing like a crazy person, like many people, just getting okay. it all done, right? Yeah, that's what I've been doing from the time I wake up to the time I go to bed. What happened? What got you interested in printing for this current crisis? I just saw that like a lot of people didn't have the PPE and like I just really wanted to be able to get it out there and to the people because I was seeing like in my local a local hospital down the street didn't have it and they were in need and just other local people that were really needing it. Are you working with anyone else or with a team such as Masks for Docs or Operation? Yeah, I've been working with Masks for Docs and the LA, the whole LA chapter has been really helpful in getting everything organized, filament, face shield, the plastic, everything. What's the process that you follow for getting the, these face shields out? So uh, how does it go from your printer to where it needs to go? What's the process? So I take the prints, I take them off my bed, I seal them up in bags every day. And every time I take them off the print, I seal them up, but I make sure my hands are always washed and clean. I'm full punching all the time. Anytime that I get more sheets, they're hard to get. And so we've been hole punching as much as we can. And then I take those, I leave them up out of my doorstep. I have someone come and pick them up and they take them to the depot and they assemble them or are just able to ship them out to the different hospitals in our area. What's, what's your count for face shields right now? I'm at around 200 as of now. And I have a hundred ready to go. A hundred ready up. to go. So then you'll back those up or let's see, they're already bagged up. So you'll put them out on your porch and a masks for docs runner will come and grab them. Yeah. How long do you anticipate you're going to be able to be printing for this cause? I hope not uh, not too long, but I'm ready for a couple more weeks. I have a lot of filament saved up that we've been getting donations from Master Docs. They've been dropping them off at any time and just trying to help out until we don't need we don't need to be helping out anymore. What does it mean to you to be able to help during this time of need? Uh, the the crisis, it's, it's crazy that, that we're able to do this as a maker community, but I mean, just personally to you, how does that make you feel? It's been really fulfilling and like, just especially giving me something to do because I've just been home all the time and like really being able to help the community and just giving me like something that's been able to make people smile and give them the protection they need. Well, I don't want to take up any more of your time. I know I've got work to do, and I'm sure you have to get back to printing. So uh, we'll we'll see you online, and I wish you the best of luck. All right. Thank you so much. You too. Right. Take it easy, Justin. A huge thanks for stopping by. If you have any news tips you think I should know about, send me an email. You can use news at todayin3dprinting.com. Stay safe, wash your hands, and I'll see you in the next one.